Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wrong. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story, got laid off, found out I was being replaced at a lower wage, and sabotaged my replacement. The second story, site manager screwed with my tenants homes so I cost the property management company over half a million in damages, lost rent, and legal fees. The third story. Coworker makes a racial comment about my girlfriend. I blast him full on in the face with a bunch of crumbs and seeds. And the first story is, lay me off right before Christmas, I'll sabotage your replacement for me. I was an automotive technician for a decade, went to college for a major automotive manufacturer, learning specifically on their models. But it got boring quick. I love off reading. So after graduating, I found what I thought would be an awesome job at a local off-road shop. The company had been in business for a long, long time, and was kind of known in my city as the place to go for Jeep and off-road upgrade and repairs. I was initially hired as a shop helper, with the understanding that I would learn some of the more difficult things like welding, installing gears, and other more niche skills. The shop was owned by a very religious man. When I interviewed, he went on and on about his faith, his work through his church with charities and on mission, and how pure he was having never drank in his life and rarely cursed. The first few months went well, but after a while I brought up the fact that I did have some knowledge and that I didn't want to be sweeping floors, changing oil and wasting time. I wanted to further myself as a technician. This is when the owner showed his true colors, verbally berating me in front of the rest of the staff, calling me ungrateful and stupid for thinking I would be any better. Being the naive 21-year-old I was, I put up with it. I stuck around and eventually got moved to another part of the shop. As a sort of side business, this shop is signed up with a national interlock company. Interlocks are devices installed in a car when you receive a DUI, also known as a blow and go. Get in, turn your car on, blow into the device and once it determines you're sober, it allows the car to start. I did this portion of the business for almost a full year. Pretty simple, installing the units, doing the monthly calibration and download of data, and removing the units when the person had completed the terms of their sentence. Just before Christmas, me and the other guy who did the installs were called into the office at the end of the day. No sugar coating, this man looked us dead in the eye and said he was laying us off, and discontinuing his relationship with the interlock company. We were shocked, especially with how nonchalant and arrogant he was about it. He told us to pack our things and he'd have our final checks to us by the end of the week. Since I was a technician, I had a full rolling tool chest and tool cart. I asked if I could have a few days to pick up a trailer to get my tools out, which he was surprisingly fine with. I went home, broke the news to my family, and started my search for a job. I was laid off on a Monday, so Wednesday I picked up a trailer for my dad and went to get my tools. I stepped into my old workspace to find a member of the interlock company training someone on how the interlocks work, and how to install and work with them. I got a moment with the interlock employee and asked him what's up. He said the owner laid us off and replaced us both with a single person. I went about my business, loaded up all my stuff, then went in to collect my final paycheck. I stood over it the entire time I was loading my stuff. Surprisingly, the new guy came over to see what I was doing. We talked about the job and the installs. Then an idea popped into my head. Nonchalantly, I asked the guy what he'd been hired at wage-wise. I was surprised to find that he'd been hired at a significantly lower hourly wage than me. I'd been making seven to eight dollars an hour more if memory serves. When I found out, I made sure to let him know and told him personally he'd be insane to do the job for what he'd been hired at. He looked extremely shocked when I told him my wage and excused himself. A few minutes later as I was strapping down my toolbox, he came walking out, got in a car and left. Right on his heels was the owner. He came absolutely unglued at me. I've never seen such a string of profanity from an employer, ripping me apart verbally for making his new hire quit on the first day. I just laughed, said, gee, I guess my work here is done, got in my truck and drove away. A few days later, I called the interlock representative and asked him to keep me in the loop as to whether they ever get anyone to replace us. It took them almost six months to find a new install tech. Very satisfying. I stayed in the automotive industry for 10 years, going back to the manufacturer I originally trained with. But I eventually moved on for my mental and physical well-being and ended up in the pharmaceutical industry of all places. I started in maintenance and have moved up in the environmental department. Edit. I did talk to them, but personally, I'm happy not to have to deal with those people anymore. 
As I mentioned in another comment, I'd venture to guess that 75 to 80 percent of the customers were of the I never should have been pulled over or tested, I was sober, I'd only had one to three drinks, this is just another racket to get my hard earned money, yada yada. But one of the more beautiful parts of the job was that in their file, we were arrest and sentencing notes, which usually had a small synopsis of their arrest and their BAC at time of arrest. So it was slightly enjoyable to shut them up when I could tell them I knew how drunk they were. The other 20 to 25 percent were remorseful and accepted their mistakes and were genuinely trying to get their lives back on track. I enjoyed working with those people. The second story is, site manager neglected to take care of my property, so I cost the property management company over 500k. Some background, I, 35 male, own a 72 units apartment complex. When I bought it, it was in good shape, and I spent several million getting all apartments renovated. The rent wasn't increased for any of the tenants, and I made sure that it never went up by more than $50 a year for lease renewals, baked into the leases. Shortly after all the renovations were completed, I started the search for a property management company, and ultimately settled on one that seemed well aligned with wanting to put the tenants first. As we were doing the contracts, I had my real estate friend also look at them. Between him and my lawyer, they recommended having a clause added in there. The short of it is, if there are any legal actions brought up against me for the apartment complex due to neglect of the property management staff, the property management will be responsible for all those costs and any legal fees incurred. This wasn't added in secret, and the legal team from the property management company agreed, and everything was finalized. They took over the management of the complex a month later. I was fairly hands-off and only visited the site every three to four months. Other than that, I'd have the monthly updates sent to me by the manager on site. A few months ago, I found out that a couple of the apartments had been left in severe shambles after the tenants moved out, and the cleaning crew we had took care of it. I didn't find out until after the fact that it was not completely accurate, because one of the apartments apparently had a bad roach infestation in the storage closet outside the apartment. After the new tenants moved into that apartment, they brought up the issue to the site manager. In the monthly reporting, the site manager claimed that maintenance staff tried to address with it traps and bug bombs. I didn't think too much of it and left it at that. Next month, the same thing. And the third month, after receiving the monthly report, I called the site manager stating there's a reoccurring issue, and I wanted it taken care of professionally at that point. The month's rent was waived for the tenants in that apartment, and they were put up at a hotel for a week while the issue was to be addressed. Once they returned to their apartment is when the issue started. The site manager either by mistake or by negligence didn't communicate with the exterminators, the extent or the location of the infestation. Instead of the storage closet, the apartment was fumigated, and after that, the roaches made their way into other apartments in the same building, and the nearest building, and the problem got so much worse. The same option was given to all the tenants in that building, waiving the month's rent and putting them up in a hotel for a week while the issue is addressed. They all took that offer up, however one of the tenants decided to take legal action. While I wasn't happy about it, I understood where they were coming from. Having their lives disrupted by something that should have been addressed properly to start, as we were mitts negotiating with them during mediations, my lawyer reminded me of the clause with the property management company and suggested we give them what they want. This is where I started my nuclear revenge. I had the rest of the tenants from the two impacted buildings be suggested to anonymously that one of the tenants had filed a lawsuit for the damage, and they should do the same by getting in on it. Through the mediation, I pretended to be outraged at the whole matter. The negotiation started at three months of free rent, but ultimately we all settled on one year of free rent for all those tenants. Overall, that came out to 16 apartments with rent, averaging from $1,700 monthly, that the property management had to pay for due to the negligence of the site manager, equaling to roughly $325,000 in just the lost rent they had to pay for. And the cherry on top? Due to the breach in service for property maintenance, they also have to provide free services for up to six months, while I seek out a new property management company, costing them an additional $146,000, and still pay for the legal fees on top of that. The last story is, mock my girlfriend, have a face full of crud. A long, long time ago, back in my high school years, I worked at a small retail food place. Obviously, won't name the place, but suffice to say we sold bagels. I actually loved working there and could probably write a baker's dozen of stories about the random going ons there. I swear if we put up some high def cameras in the place, we could have made a sitcom out of the people I worked with. And this was prior to the office. I've had several jobs since then, and nothing quite topped that experience. But that's for another time. Today's episode involves a potentially racist coworker making one too many comments I took fault with. 
First, to clarify why I say potentially racist. This was ages ago, and most of us were immature teens or young adults working part-time as a first job during high school. It was a predominantly white neighborhood, but naturally we had several people of various races work there over time. Black Phil will always be an eternal legend anyone who knew him. Being immature high school young 20s kids, we all had a fairly shared mentality. Offensive jokes were funny. At least, they were funny so long as you were willing to laugh at jokes at your own expense, and not just jokes at someone else's expense. So there was a ton of ribbing offensive comments between coworkers, ranging from slightly over-the-top mom jokes to flat-out offensive stereotype comments, to downright blasphemous comments regarding religion, made to our a bit more pious than us manager. This one guy, we'll call Bill, actually the younger brother of the manager, however often took things a tad too far. How do you take things too far in a place where everyone's trying to one-up each other with offensive comedy? Well, pretty much every other worker there gave off the same strong vibe of, I'm just making a joke, I don't actually think that, when making any manner of racial comment. This guy? It just always seemed like he was a bit more serious in his comments than the rest of us. Could never quite be sure, but it often seemed like he wasn't making a joke. Like maybe he was just actually a bit racist. At the time, I was dating a black girl. This didn't seem like it at all an issue to us, but the very short white dude and the very tall black girl dating was apparently a hot topic in our community. It's not like the neighborhood was super against it or racist or anything, it's just that our relationship was apparently very visible. People we barely knew apparently knew about us and that we were dating. To a lot of people, the fact that I was dating this tall black girl became my most prominent feature, which looking back was almost refreshing after spending years as the short weird kid. And naturally, everyone at work knew about it. And in a place rife with offensive humor, it naturally got brought up. Just usually more lighthearted than our other comments. People trying to make offensive jokes. Ironically, not actually offend someone. Oh, but Bill always took things a step too far. At one point, he made a generally disparaging remark against black women, implying all black women were de facto unattractive, right next to me while I was holding a broom. So I bonked him, rather lightly but enough to feel it on the head with the broom, and gave him a generic shut your D mouth comment. Everyone else around laughed, told him he deserved it. Life went on. But finally, one day he said something way too far regarding my girlfriend. He was probably just trying to make a joke, but it was rough enough that I won't dare repeat it here. Posts would definitely get taken down, and I thought, yeah, he has to pay for that. Bagel store. Big old baskets on the bagel wall, and bagels make plenty of crumbs, especially seeded ones like poppy, everything, sesame, onion, etc. We had a broom and dustpan, and a small shop vac for cleaning up all the leftover seeds and crumbs at the end of the day. So I took the mini shop vac, took the hose out of the intake side, and put it in the exhaust side, and used the broom and dustpan to pour some of the seeds and crumbs and crap into the hose. Plugged it in, then innocently called out, Hey Bill, to get his attention. He looked over, I turned on the vac, and the exhaust port basically shotgunned all the seeds and crumbs straight into his face and open eyes. He starts writhing. Other co-workers, including his older brother, start laughing. Mid-writhe, I just shout something at him like, I told you not to say that SH anymore, and walk off. Once again, everyone gives him a basic, yeah, you had that coming speech. He washes his eyes out, and we just go back to closing up the shop. Post-credit. Years later, his behavior seemed to settle into, okay, he's not actually racist, at least he's not now. He just came across way more serious with his offensive jokes than the rest of us when we were younger. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out, and hit the like button to support the channel.